Bush. My name is Greg Anderson. Welcome back to another look inside uh, what these candidates are talking about. A lot of really uh, terrific people that are running. A lot of smarts, a lot of experience, a lot of perspective. It's a good time to really uh, stop and analyze a little bit in terms of who we're uh, going to vote for or possibly vote for. Um, with me today is David Sampson. Uh, David is running for Selectman in uh, Sandwich. May 5th is when you can vote for David. Um, do you prefer Dave or David? Dave is very acceptable. Dave is acceptable. acceptable. That's awesome. Uh, it is a three-way race, two open seats. Incumbents are running for their seats again. Dave is the only non-incumbent. Tell me, Dave, how's the campaign going so far? We're having a great campaign, very strong. We've had tremendous support from the community, and I couldn't be more appreciative for that. Um, you know, a lot of the, the core residents, folks that have been here for a long time, have come out to, to really get behind us. They're spreading the message. And one of the things that's really exciting for me as a native of Sandwich, my family has been here since 1977, is that a lot of the folks that I went to high school with that are still here in town are really excited to see one of our own uh, yeah. stepping up to take leadership in our town. That's great. Dave, tell me a little bit about your background. Who are you, um, and particularly, who are you in your experience and your background as it relates to taking a leadership role such as this? Sure, so as I mentioned, uh, you know, my family's been in town since 1977. I have gone entirely through the Sandwich Public School System. I'm a 1995 graduate of Sandwich High School. Uh, after high school, I went off to Boston, went to college, actually moved back to the Cape. I've, I've maintained my residence here in Sandwich uh, for most of my life. Did stay in Plymouth for a short period of time. Um, and I've worked in the high availability technology industry mm -hmm. for almost 20 years. Um, and what that means is that I work with companies that have uh, mission critical computer systems. Mm -hmm. And our job is to keep those systems running pretty much 24 hours a day, no matter what happens. Yeah. Um, so in that capacity, I've worked with a lot of internet companies. I've worked with a lot of uh, medium and large enterprises, keeping their mission critical systems running. And uh, I've also picked up an MBA at Northeastern University along the way a few years ago. And at the Good moment, I've been working as part of a uh, infrastructure as a service company uh, that serves, again, mission critical technology applications. So working in the technology field is, is certainly a significant amount of my business experience. Mm -hmm. You're um, being a non-incumbent. This is your first run for office. Uh, what are some of the misconceptions that people have of you? you well, think? honestly, one of the biggest misconceptions that people have of, have of me is that I'm my father, because my father was a public official locally here for about 25 years yeah. as the superintendent of the local Upper Cape Tech School. Um, and he retired about 15 years ago, but the funniest thing is when I see people around town sometimes, and my father lives in, in Bourne now, but they say to me, oh, I see your father's running for selectman. <laughs> so that might be one of the biggest uh, misconceptions right. that we have. Yeah. Um, other folks think that I just came to town um, because they haven't seen me uh, out, at our, out at our public meetings before or, or around town. But um, since I have been back in town a few years ago, I've been paying a lot of attention to what's going on here in Sandwich. And mm -hmm. thanks to the uh, technology available here through the access station, I can watch right. all the Selectman's meetings no matter where I might be on demand on my computer. So yeah. it's been a great opportunity for me to stay engaged in what's going on and really inspired me to, to run this campaign. You have, um, you have really positioned yourself as someone that has a fresh perspective. Youth is something that you're able to bring to the table, kind of a, the new generation or the next generation, if you will, um, in, um, I wouldn't say politics, but in civic responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, talk a little bit about that in terms of what you do bring to the table in the context of your generation. I think that, you know, having been in town for as long as I have been, you know, everybody from my generation and, and folks from other generations as well, because I talk to a lot of people. And you know, I, I don't, don't segment myself into really representing my generation as much as my desire to represent all generations. Mm -hmm. But I do feel that the disconnect exists between kind of the old guard and some of the younger generation here in town. Mm -hmm. And there's a desire for change. There's a desire for change and progress across all the generations of all the folks that I talk to. And, and I've met with so many people over the last six weeks or eight weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, literally every morning I start my day having coffee with one or two people um, every single day and, and often meet people in the evening as well as time allows. Mm -hmm. But being able to kind of connect all those dots and be able to start to look forward towards what type of change people want 
what the misunderstandings, misunderstandings are about facts. You know, one area where I'm really, something that's really important to me is maintaining facts about issues and fairness. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I know that there's a lot of things that happen in the community, um, especially around communication, I think that happens sometimes where we don't have the right data out there. It might not be accessible. And I think that technology can be used to solve a lot of those problems. But we need to get the right information out there. We need to bring everybody together, mm -hmm. generations, committees, boards. And I think the perspective that I bring to the table and my leadership style based on my success and the businesses that I've run will be a significant asset to our town. When you talk about um, hearing uh, a call for change, people are looking for change, what specifically do you think people in Sandwich want changed? I think there's, there's two areas to this. One is they, they want to see progress on issues. Again, I've lived here for a very long time. We've been trying to build a new police station since the 80s. We've been trying to make a plan and, and see development on the Golden Triangle for you know, a good part of my life. People want to see these issues move forward. Mm -hmm. you know, very, very important to them. The other piece is people want to see economic development. People want to see their tax rate go down. And obviously we have some opportunities coming with NRG. They're gonna be doing the repowering on the power plant, which is very exciting, and I'm certainly a proponent of that. Um, and you know, that's really a three-phase plan, and we're, we're approaching the first phase. But you know, something I've learned in my career is that when you have a big customer show up at the door, like the 300-pound gorilla, and they're starting to fork over a couple million dollars a year in new revenue for you, that's really exciting. But it's also really dangerous. And our town learned that with the power plant once already. We need to be able to work with the assets that we have in our town, whether it's developers, land, uh, the SEIC, and bring new revenue into our town through new business opportunities. Is the, t let's talk a little bit about, um, about that. Um, you had referenced in your material on your website that you are looking for a board of selectmen that can create a plan for um, infrastructure, for, uh, it seems as if, and now these are my words, not yours, but really um, put a plan together that seems to follow a timeline, follow, start to finish, like let's get mm -hmm. things done. Um, what does that plan look like to you? On your first day sitting in your selectman seat, how do you bring a a, a, a goal like that to an existing mm -hmm. board of selectmen? Well, one of the things is asking the right questions and listening. So the first part of success for me in a lot of situations is, is listening to make sure that we can gather, gather all the data and asking the right questions, asking the tough questions and, and getting the answers from, from all the folks that are at the table, mm -hmm. you know, gathering as much data as possible. Um, I think it's important to understand my business experience to answer this question. You know, in the business field that I work in, uh, we provide technology solutions for pharmaceutical companies, for example. So what that means is when I go deliver a technology solution to a pharmaceutical company, we create a set of specifications. Our technology engineers architect a solution. We create a validation plan for that solution so that we mutually validate it, the technology firm and the customer. We implement the plan, and then we continue to validate it over time to make sure that it's successful. What that means is when we start with that plan in the first place, we've thought through the entire challenge. We're not coming back to the table saying, what if afterwards? Mm -hmm. So to be successful with our town and start to achieve our goals, what I'd really like to see is that we have annual goals as a town and action items associated with those goals that we're going to meet on an annual basis. Having guiding principles, which I believe that we have very firmly defined in some of the planning that the existing Board of Selectmen has done, is tremendous. Mm -hmm. But for success and for progress, we need to refine those goals, determine action items, timelines, and costs to create a plan for success. And we need to communicate that to the taxpayers so that they understand that they are being heard, they understand that things are going to move forward, and they understand how it's going to move forward and how it's going to impact their taxes. That's what they care about. You know, if we look around the town of Sandwich, and again, I've been here for a very long time, I've been educated in the school systems here, I've, I've been through the buildings, I've seen the buildings. Our infrastructure needs help. Mm -hmm. Our residents want to see their tax rate go down. So that doesn't really balance out. And I've told people this, it's, it's just the truth. We can't improve our infrastructure 
and reduce our tax rate at the same time mm -hmm. without new revenue. Fortunately, some new revenue is coming, but again, it's not the single solution to our challenge. Mm -hmm. when, you're, when you're out there talking with people and the issue of a very sluggish um, uh, you know, process of decision making, you know, the, the wing school, good God, when is that ever going to be determined? Um, the the uh, apparent um, sluggishness of of the decision making. How how can you how can you effectuate change in that area when it relates to a board that is just you know in the public's opinion very sluggish at making mm -hmm. some some of those decisions. Well, I think the government is sluggish kind of by the nature of what it is. Mm -hmm. um, having worked with government organizations delivering you know, technology solutions for business, I've seen this and, and I know what happens. What I've learned though is that you need to drive the process to make it move forward faster. Mm -hmm. So in my business experience, when I'm working with public entities, we drive the process as hard and as fast as possible to make, make the ball move forward. It's the only way it's going to happen is if somebody is sitting at the table, advocating, asking those questions, determining next steps and establishing timelines and goals. If that's not happening, if we're sitting at the table saying, okay, we're gonna figure it out later, it's not a plan for success. Mm. You know, and when I see us make decisions for our town and there's pieces of plans that we're gonna figure out later, that's frustrating for me because what that typically means to me is that we're gonna be going back to the taxpayers to ask for more later, to ask for something else later. We've, we've put together a plan that perhaps we feel would appease the needs for the moment. Mm -hmm. It's an attainable plan. It's a plan that we feel that we can sell, but it might not necessarily be the whole plan. It frustrates me to see a plan that's abbreviated for the sake of sales to the town when the taxpayers just want an expectation of what needs to be done over time and how things are going to look. Can you give me an example of what you may have seen in the past? Yeah. Well, I'd say you know one or one one piece that I see right now that's on the table yeah. is you know certainly we're we're taking some great initiatives around the public safety right. needs of our town, and I and I certainly agree that we we do need new public safety facilities. My concerns though are we don't have a, a full plan about what happens with the legacy infrastructure, what happens with our existing police station, what happens with the Forestdale Fire Station. Can those assets be repurposed? Will they be sold? So for me, having an end-to-end -end plan means we're going to create budget, raise funds for new infrastructure. We're gonna have a plan about how the legacy infrastructure is gonna get decommissioned. These are the returns we expect to get on that or not. Mm -hmm. And then we're gonna move forward and this project, this public safety project will be done. And that's, that's just an example. But you know, I think that you know, it's very short-sighted to not be thinking these challenges through. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about, um, in the context of, of increasing the tax base, um, clean energy, NRG. Talk to me a little bit about your, your, your take on that whole yeah. um, So So I think, you know, the residents of Sandwich have suffered, suffered some rounds from that power plant over the years, and, and certainly there were times when we had soot on our boats at the marina, and I'm really happy that, that we're behind that. At the same time, I was disappointed that the, the plants really started to get less use and less value, which means less revenue for our tax base over recent years because you know, the, the plant really is not the most attractive thing that we have downtown at the Sandwich Marina. And I'm excited at the development we see at the marina, not just in our, our own marina facilities, but the new restaurant that's being built down there. And I was down there yesterday and the progress and the, and the timelines are just really amazing. But I think the opportunity for NRG and repowering this, it's gonna to help to fill a, a power need in our region, cleaner, faster power that can come online faster. And something that is very exciting to me is the opportunity to reduce our 550 foot exhaust stack down to about 250 feet. Mm -hmm. And you know, some folks in town years ago, uh, very ambitious folks tried to have that uh, beautified with some paint and, and some other initiatives that didn't work out. But you know what that means is that the 250 feet mark on that exhaust stack really falls right around 10 feet off the top of the highest roof that they have there today. And I think everybody in this town would be very excited mm -hmm. to see that exhaust stack reduced. Yeah. And uh, I'll tell you, one of the things, you know, of course, my wife and I live in Sandwich. Uh, we've been 
here in our Forestdale home for three years, but you know, part of our investment in sandwiches is that we're opening a gift store down at Merchant Square right now. So I can tell you when we look out the window, the exhaust stack from the power plant is, is our primary view. So any reduction to that, uh, not just for us, but for everybody, I know will be very well received. Uh, businesses, uh, industry, um, small businesses. I'm a small business owner. Uh, I want to maintain my business here. Talk to me about reasons why Sandwich is a good place to be. So, you know, I live here because I love the environment here. Sandwich is a beautiful place. You know, the summertime, you know, as a person that, that's a principal at his business, you know, I spend as much time on the Cape as possible. I, I work as much from the Cape as possible. I think that's why a lot of us live here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, great place to come with your family, very good school system, very important that we continue to support funding for our public schools so that we attract the right, the right kind, of, kind of people here, young families, younger people that want to be here. Um, but you know, the other piece is you can get anywhere from here. Uh, my customers are, are all over the country, so you know, living in Sandwich, I'm very accessible to two major airports. I can jump in my car and, and get to New York City if I need to do that. And you know, at the same time, we're able to establish our home base here. And you know, for me, we're excited about being able to establish a business here that will really help to serve not just the tourist industry, but year-round industry. And one of the things I've noticed from being here for a very long time is if you start to to look around the local communities and not just sandwich, but there's all sort of niche industries that take place in places like the Sandwich Industrial Park or, or other office parks um, with very specialty businesses that you would never know mm -hmm. are there. And all of those folks that I've talked to have come here because they love the environment here. They love the accessibility to the beaches, the ocean, mm -hmm. et cetera. Uh, when, you're, when you're out, talking with people, and, and I commend you for, first of all, I commend you for running for office. I mean, Thank you. You, there's, that ain't an easy gig. It's a challenge. Full-time job, running a business in Quincy, you know, you're- I do, yes. You, you know, so you're, you, you've got that commute, you're trying to do some work at the home. The commute is primary campaigning time. My phone is- Working the phone. We're just working up those phone minutes, the yeah. whole drive. Tell me what it's like to run for selectman today. It's a busy job. Yeah, um, I love talking to people. Right. I love being in touch with people personally. Um, we've done some big events, and, and I get the opportunity to, sp to speak with large groups of people. What I really like to do is to talk to people one-on-one -on -one and answer their questions and hear about their issues. And what's something that I'm very passionate about as a person is helping people. I love stopping. I love stopping whatever I'm doing to just to help somebody in need with with whatever their challenge might be. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's something I've done for a very long time. It's part of who I am, mm -hmm. and it's part of the reason that I'm, I'm doing this, this campaign um, to serve our town. I've been a member and past president of the Born Sandwich Rotary Club of, for 10 years. I've been a member. I've been a lifetime participant through family connections in the club. Uh, you know, in the past, I've spent significant amounts of time volunteering with areas like the Canal Region Chamber of Commerce when I was a, when I was a kid with the, the Scallop Fest, the Boardwalk Festival, the Sandwich Sea Fest, the Cape Cod Air Show, um, countless hours volunteering because community service was really part of what we did as a family when mm -hmm. I was growing up. And volunteering at all these events was something for me. But at the end of the day, I'm, I'm certainly very excited that our election is, is just under four weeks away um, for a couple of reasons. One is the campaigning part is very time consuming. Yeah. Uh, the other piece is I want to get to work. Yeah. I want to start to make change. and and. The exciting part about running this campaign is I was paying attention before, but I'm paying attention more than ever now. Plus, I get to hear from the residents what their perspectives are, what their needs are, what they want to see happen. And a lot of those desires align with my personal vision for what I think can be accomplished. Mm -hmm. So it's very empowering for me. It, it makes me want to do this job even more every single day. So the challenge aside from the logistics and the time and the energy that it takes, is you're a, 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 you're a guy that wants to help people. I hear that. But you can't solve all the problems. And some of my issues you may not be able to really address. Um, just in the context of, of you know, what, a, what the Board of Selectmen can and can't do. Um, how, do you, how do you weigh that dynamic of, I guess it's a discussion of prioritization. 
How do you prioritize all that you're hearing from people uh, and say, okay, this is how I'm going to not make a plan, but this is how I'm going to kind of bring some of these issues to the forefront, mm -hmm. knowing down the road we can get to others. How do you prioritize all that you're hearing? Yeah. So I think that's a great question. There's two pieces to that, and, and I've approached similar business problems in other places. Um, the first piece of solving any group of problems or any problem at all is that you need to use your resources. I am only one person. I can only accomplish so much as, as one person. However, I am very good at assessing my resources, evaluating my resources, and putting them to use for action. Mm -hmm. So that's how we're going to make accomplishments happen. The second piece is we need to maintain the business of the day, whatever that business is as a board of selectmen, budget issues, licensing issues, those items. But what's important is that we assess the some of these more priority issues, strategic initiatives, working with other boards, we inventory those items, we do need to set a priority list. Where do these priorities come? What's attainable? What's on the table today? Is it public safety buildings and, and uh, you know, road, road bonds? Um, is it working with the SEIC to start to increase strategic activity from an economic perspective and, and what things can we do in tandem? There's some balancing to that. And the initial phase of, of getting on the board for me is certainly going to be uh, paying attention to what's going on, listening, starting to ask the questions that I've, I've been waiting to ask on a regular basis and participating in those discussions so hopefully we can see quicker results on a regular basis and then starting to chip away at those items, working with the board, working with the chairman of the board to make sure that we are getting the attention that some of these issues deserve. Talk to me a little bit about transparency. It's always an issue when it comes to uh, town committees, town, town functions of this type. What have you seen as it relates to this current board or even in the recent past um, as it relates to transparency mm -hmm. with, with voters? So I think um, voters feel like there's not a lot of transparency. Mm -hmm. I think that's a, the common situation for a lot of our voters today. I think that the board, and, and I've met with the chairman of the board, I've met with the town manager, I've talked to a lot of folks, um, you know, feel that we're using a lot of tools to be able to deliver information to voters today. I think that we can do better. Uh, I think that technology can be used, other resources can be used to push that information out so that all the facts are available. And you know, it really comes back to something I mentioned earlier, making sure that everybody has the facts is very important to me. There's no reason why we can't deliver the best transparency, timely information with the tools that we have today between websites, Facebook and other social media, text message blasting, telephone calls. There's a lot of resources out there that we can embrace as channels to get information out to the voters and make sure they know what's going on. Now myself as a person, I'm a very accessible person. I love to communicate with people. Um, if you want to, try emailing me and I'll respond very quickly except for during the recording of this television yes, show. Exactly. Uh, I answer the phone on an extremely regular basis, text messages, and people stay in touch with me through all these channels. And it's funny, you know, we have the, the Facebook page going, which my website, DaveSampson.com, uh, will point you right to my, my Facebook page. But people message me on the Facebook page and I answer them and, and they say to me, how did you answer me so fast? But it's a little bit of a product of my experience in the industry that I work in. Yeah. Uh, you know, 24-hour technology business that means that we're always on duty. And I'm always on duty for, for everybody. And I make sure that they get a timely response when they have a question. Uh, give me your first, um, first 90 days. You're, on, you're in. You did it. You won. Congratulations. Now you got the seat. Your name's up there. You're on television. What's your first 90 days? What's, what, how, what's your first 90 days looking like for you? So I think there's a couple pieces to that as well. And, and part of that is what happens in our town in the next weeks, right, mm -hmm. with, the, with the issues that are on the table? Mm -hmm. What happens with road bonds? What happens with public safety? What happens with, with firefighters? Um, you know, certainly the budgetary process will be kicking off um, prior to the start of the new f fiscal year, so that's going to be something that's, that's happening. Something I'm already doing, though, before I've even started, is I'm going out, I'm starting to talk to voters, like I've mentioned, but also folks from other boards, other boards that want to be able to have better collaboration with the Board of Selectmen. I want to create a very large atmosphere of inclusion so that everybody is working together towards common goals. I think there's a lot of separation with the boards in our town. 
we need to reset those expectations across the board for everybody and start to create an inclusive community to bring people together. It's the only way that we're going to be successful as a town. We can't start you know, pointing fingers, looking at each other. And I know that everybody says that we don't do this, and I know that we don't do it consciously, but those lines are drawn. And we need to find ways to work together and make sure that all those boards work very fluidly together for success. It is the only way we are going to move forward. Uh, when I'm looking at uh, your technology background and, and, and you, you spoke to your experience and the transparency, um, change is hard. And change, uh, especially amongst a group of people and then of course uh, with the selectmen and then of course the voters, um, is Sandwich a, a change? happy town or is it or is that going to be a a, cha a challenge to mm -hmm. try to sell the change that you yeah. would like to bring I think uh, so sandwich is a change happy town that that sounds like a tough statement to accept probably for everybody uh, sandwich is a change wanting town everybody says they want change but sometimes when it comes to executing change they're resistant to it depending on what that change might be but I think you're correct change involves sales it, it involves convincing the voters that this is the right path forward. And part of being able to do that is having a long-term plan for success. My, my whole strategy on this feeds together that if we can develop a long-term plan for success, set expectations with taxpayers, and convince them that it's the way forward, we can all come together to execute and move forward. You know, some folks are going to sign up and, and they're going to be ready to move forward. And, and I know, having talked to people, that there's a lot of people like that. Others will be resistant. That's just the nature of, of how things come together. Mm -hmm. But I can assure you that you know, my success personally in my businesses is really due to my passion and dedication. And I'm going to bring those same skills to the table for our voters so that we can make progress and we can make a difference. Anything surprising you in the campaign? What I think you know, one of the things that surprises me is you know, I do talk to a lot of people. Uh, it's it's a funny to me or, or interesting to me the data pieces that I get on a regular basis, new data pieces about different issues I haven't heard before, new perspectives on issues that I haven't heard before. And I, and I really take a lot of time to bring all that data together so I can get comprehensive pictures of all sides of some of the challenges that we're facing. But even at that, talking to new people every single day, I find out new things. And uh, some of it's surprising, some of it's not surprising, some of it's just validation. Mm -hmm. As we, as we wind down, I have a, a, a couple questions a, a, a about you personally, uh, but let me just ask you this. Um, tell me, uh, I'll, put the, I'll put the hypothetical hat on. I am uh, retired, I live in Sandwich. Why does a vote for Dave Sampson matter to me? So I think that everybody in this town is looking for municipal services that meet their needs. And my goal is to service all the constituents. It's not about the young families. It's not about the senior citizens. Specifically, in either case, it's about everyone. We need to put together comprehensive, long-term solutions for success. That is my biggest goal in everything I do for our town. Those goals, those, those ambitions, need to meet the character of our town, which is clearly very important to our voters, and it has been for my entire life. I've seen it. I've lived it. Uh, but I know that even some of our, you know, the senior members of our community are concerned about the tax rate. Everybody's concerned about the tax mm -hmm. rate. And myself, you know, I, I, my wife and I live in town. We don't have any kids in the school. We live on a private road. We don't have snow plowing, and we pay high taxes, and I'm very okay with doing that. I understand why things come together to what they are. But being able to deliver transparency, being able to have somebody that is, you know, really an advocate for all of our voters is what I'm going to bring to the table for them. I'm a parent, again the hypothetical, I'm a parent, mm -hmm. I have kids in the school system, why I vote for Dave Sampson? Why is that gonna, how's that gonna affect mm -hmm. me? So I'll say this, I think the best answer I have for that question, uh, you know, public education when I was a kid was really our family business. My father cares very much about education, worked for, as a school teacher and administrator for 33 years, and growing up, being in a public school environment, atmosphere, seeing the workings of that, was something that was a very big part of our life. 
there is no question that I am very committed to the students of our town getting the best public education possible. I don't want to see our school children have to go to other towns to get the education that they're looking for. I don't want to see funding cut from our students mm -hmm. um, to have anything less than the best education available with the assets that we have. And I think the educational assets we have in our town are tremendous. What do you do for fun, Dave? I don't have time for fun. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Fair enough. This is what I do for fun, is, yeah. is, uh, is run around and do this stuff. But uh, in reality, what I do for fun is we are very fortunate to live on Wakeby Lake, uh, which is over in the far still part of our town. And uh, our, our dogs and my wife and I enjoy boating on the lake. And we enjoy uh, running around town a little bit and, and eating out and doing things like that. Of course, we're very, very busy at the moment between running this campaign and starting a new business. Yeah. Uh, our free time is limited, but when, what we really like to do is to travel. But we haven't had the opportunity to do very much of that this winter because we may have overcommitted ourselves a little bit. But uh, at the end of the day, we have enough time and resources to achieve our goals, and we're really excited about opening our store and, and winning this campaign. Yeah. What's the store going to be? The Wish Gift Company. The Wish Gift Company. Yeah, we're, we're right next to Cafe Chew downtown, yeah. and uh, Wish Gift Company is a gift basket-like concept, except it's more of a, a gift crate or a wooden box with uh, gourmet foods, handmade local items, items like you'd find on a Etsy, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, jewelry, custom gifts like that. So in the store, we can actually put together custom gift packages uh, for themed events like a new baby or welcome to Cape Cod, or you'll be able to purchase those items individually. Just if you find an item that you like, uh, you could go ahead and come by and get some. Like uh, we just met with the folks from Nobska Farms in Woods Hole last weekend, and they have locally roasted coffee and they make their own chocolate. Uh, there's a couple, they actually rent a commercial kitchen once a week and they make the chocolate and the hot sauce and the jams. And it's just a terrific, terrific product, and that's just one example of many. So we're very excited about opening up next month. That is great. So we're doing an election and a, and a store opening shortly thereafter. So it's May is a very big month for the Samson family. I, I was going to say, you're, you're not really, you have no downtime. You have no downtime. I'm very committed to success. Yeah. Well, I can see that you have um, drive. And, um, and, and starting a business in today's world, especially in technology, you know, it's, a, um, it, it's, it's not an easy business. It's not an easy industry, I guess I would say. And to start a business um, is, is uh, a, a challenge, but it seems like you've been successful at that. Seem like when you set your eyes on things, then you go for it. Um, I, I commend you for running for office. It's it's definite. I, I have people in my family who have done the same thing, uh, and it's um, it, it, it it's a uh, it's a noble task. Uh, good luck to you. Tell everyone how they can hear. Uh, get yeah. In touch so with you. so what I'd say is uh, you know I'd certainly love to talk to all of you. Uh, hit my Facebook page, DaveSampson.com. Uh, D-A-V-E-S-A-M-P-S-O-N.com. You can send me an email, Dave at DaveSampson.com. Call me, 508-776-8565. Text me. All acceptable. Good luck, my friend. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Greg. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you next time.